What is up, you guys, and welcome to our first Vala Pokemon League Battle Season 5, which is really the Skyrender and the Scandinavian style lens. We're going up against Nasser and his Houston Rotoms, and straight off the bat, uh, we're going up against a team here which I had a rough time prepping for. I didn't necessarily find the time to prep in detail. However, the team I brought is something I was proud of, and I think I'm dealing with what I think I was going to be forced to fend off one of the beautiful cords of Bulu and Howlucha. However, I was fearing stuck attack and making it out of making it to this game because it was that or Rhyperior. I was very happy to see Rhyperior over stack attack. Other than that, I think the team looks the part I was gonna go up against. We have a regular Rotom, I was gonna say Rotom Wash to get with Halucha, Mega Gyarados, Tapabulu, Dragology, and Rhyperior. So yeah, definitely think that I should be able to do semi well. Um that said, if you guys can see on my team, we have a Decidui, which is a banded variant. With Shadow Sneak, Spirit Shackle, Leaf, uh, Leaf Blade, and uh, U-Turn. Uh, Solvus Gigalith, um, Tapu Koku, a defensive variant, be able to fend off a plus two uh, Halucha, which is a real, real threat. Um, Steelix is here, of course, the mega form of that with Stealth Rocks, really a pretty standard set. The only thing I thought was unfortunate was that, since I was kind of stressing out when I was prepping, or not prepping, but, but Genin. Uh, I unfortunately got Rock Blast over Roar, and uh, I really wanted something way of Pirates, not being able to do that was uh, a handicap for this Wacker Bell. That said, we also have Stalton with a Bandit variant, Adamant, a bit on the bulkier side, uh, be able to actually abuse if my opponent is going to bring Toxic Spike, because, well, since my team is hyper offensive, I don't necessarily think that uh, I'm being hindered by Toxic Spike that much, and of course, Sneasel. And now, I was debating whether I should have brought Sneasel or Latios. In hindsight, I think Latios would have been easier to use. Um, Sneasel is, after all, a bit on the weaker side. And um, the only aspect of actually being able to pursue Trap was not necessarily that important of this Wacker Bell. However, he is fairly weak to Ice, so it's definitely spammable to get, of course, a knockoff. So, from the get-go, I'm feeling that uh, my Bandit Decidueye is going to be the one that does the most amount of work. The only thing, Pokemon walling that is potentially actually Dragology, and I don't necessarily feel Dragology due to Giggles being Assault Vested. So, with that said, let's of course go into the match. So from the start, we do get what I would say an ideal situation. Uh, he's gonna actually start with the Rodom uh, Wash, and well, I am a bit on the predictable side here. I'm gonna go to the side to go directly for that Leaf Blade. I think Spirit Check would have been overall the stronger play, and definitely since that would have meant that I would have locked in Dragology and actually two it curing it. So, yeah, I'm definitely, like I said, a bit on the predictable side, but at the same time, you know, it is what it is. I'm still having a very, very safe switch in Gigalith, and I do expect my opponent here to actually go for the Toxic Spike. I feel that it's it makes the most sense. As that is exactly what we see. Now, with that in mind, I think it's gonna go potentially for a skull. And Stoutland can definitely take a skull, and I can just start abusing a bandit facade from Stoutland. And basically, what I want with Stoutland early is it kind of wall break and just open up the team a little bit. Uh, I don't have any need to actually abuse the speed or anything like that. But unfortunately, my opponent see this coming through, actually goes to Tapabulu. I think that's really unfortunate because. Well, Type of Bullet can definitely take a facade, while not well, he definitely can take it, and a Woodhammer could very well take me out. But here's what I was thinking. I'm taking him down with me, and if I take down Bulu, that means only Dragology is able to deal with uh, with a Type of Coco. But he does have Horn Leech instead, and the reason that is unfortunate is because, well, not only do he get recovery, but don't I'm not able to KO him, and uh, I really wanted that. So I feel that that's, that's definitely a mistake, as... Uh, Woodhammer would have been a much, much more desirable from my side, of course, not a mistake for Nazi side. Uh, now, I'll keep going for Vassal as we're going to see Protect. Uh, bit of an annoying side, actually. Definitely didn't expect him to have Protect. Uh, most likely, my biggest guess here is that he has potentially a lead seed or anything like that. Definitely a, a stall your Bulu. Vassal should definitely be able to close to carrying it more than it was in that range. So, with that said, he's actually going to send him to Rhyperior. Now, I'm still in such a low HP that for Rhyperior here, I kind of feel I just want to take it out. I don't want to force switch into uh, um, 
Steelix. I kind of want my Steelix healthy. Um, so with that said, I'm just going to keep going for the facades. But luckily for me, I should say, though I don't think it necessarily matters. Uh, he do miss the Rock Blast here, but as stated before already, uh, I don't think it mattered because my switch in here would have been Coco no matter what to be able to want to KO. Uh, this only actually ensures that I can actually bring my Decidueye and just go for a U-turn and keeping my Coco more healthy from the switch-ins. So we are actually close to actually two it's KOing, uh, or three it's KOing right here. If it was for Lift or Vizard, I wouldn't have been able to resolve that. And that would have been kind of kind of cool actually. Uh, definitely, we wouldn't have seen something like that that often. So with that said, Consigned is of course the Decidueye is going to come in and I'm just going to go for that Bandit U-turn. Basically, I don't see a way for him of preserving this, but at the same time, I don't want to lock myself into Leaf Blade again. Uh, mainly because I feel that being locked in here do ensure that his uh, Gyarados can actually come in and set up a Dragon Dance for free. So with that said, I'm gonna anyway bring Rain Bronze. And, um, well, quite frankly, uh, with this thing in mind, I probably should have switched into Coco anyway from the get-go. I think that would have preserved any kind of issues. Now, I'm gonna have Leftovers. I was supposed to have Electric Seed. Uh, so that's also a thing I kind of missed out on. Uh, that said, it doesn't necessarily matter. As we see, of course, the Dragology. Now, I do have Nature Gift or Nature Power to be able to... I think it's the thing that does half HP on the Pokemon. But I felt that that was too early to actually predict. As uh, I'm going to bring in Giga Lith, I'm just going to absorb whatever it goes for. It goes for a Skull. As you guys will see, it won't do anything. So at this point, uh, I kind of feel that the Dragology has nothing on Giga Lith. However, I don't necessarily have anything for Dragology either, uh, since uh, Steelix is probably the only one that can actually outspeed it and take it out. So my opponent is actually going to bring Fangs Sky, which is Halucha, because I actually decided not to draft the Halucha uh, to be able to kind of help out my um, my buddy here. Now here's an option, like, there is really nothing to do against Halucha, we'll decide to switch out and actually go to Kunside, basically hoping for the high jump kick to be able to kill me, um, actually as a low kick instead. Now, I was thinking here, because Shadow Sneak is a guarantee KO here, I was thinking he knew that, so I actually go for a U-turn instead, but he actually stays in, and of course he KOs, KOs my uh, Decidueye. Uh, he actually told me later he doesn't know it gets Shadow Sneak, so that was an extremely high oral prediction on my side, and I lose up actually too much momentum here, so much so that I'm now in an area where I think I potentially lose, um, because I got to Pursuit Trap this because basically I just want a differential because I am now for a free switch for Gyarados and uh, the only way for me of actually stopping Gyarados is by roaring him out and then hoping that Tapu Koko can come in freely and kind of wheel himself around. Um, so that was my initial thought at least and the reason I say that is because as I stated before I do have Rock Blast, not and unfortunately not um, <laughs> Roar. And I realized this as he started setting up Dragon Dances, because there's basically where I realized that, yeah, I, I, I can't win now. Um, there is no way for me of actually stopping the Jardos, and yeah, yeah, it turns out to be a 4-0 victory for Nasser. Uh, I really just want to kind of, I, I don't want to build something up here, because it's my mistake, and I feel I shouldn't try to remedy this or anything like that, I should only just tell you guys how it is. I definitely can say this though, that Aqua Tail critting me is unfortunate, but I think it still is a 2 hit kill no matter what. Um, I don't believe I would have been able to survive a 2 hit kill from it. Uh, but the thing is, I want to go at and say is that I don't think, or rather, um, since I, this battle was just before I went for my vacation, and I don't believe I was able to, um, I was going to say prep right, but probably that I didn't find the time to kind of um, focus on this game, so I basically I built my team in 20 minutes with just an, a, a basic idea of what I want to try to create. And while I think the definition of that creation was good, uh, it was definitely a, more of a high risk and definitely losing Decidueye basically meant I could no longer effectively deal with Rotom. And, uh, well, quite frankly, um, to be honest here, I think his... His knowledge of not knowing that was downfall from my side because had I just attacked him the way I was supposed to, uh, I would have been able to possibly deal better with um, the Gyarados. At the same time, I probably wouldn't because at the same time I would have been locked into Shadow Sneak. That would have meant that he would force himself to, of course, Mega Evolve and I still would have been in the same spot because I wouldn't have been able to roar him out. So in the end, it comes down to me not being able to roar him out and the Gyarados basically sweeps my team because of a pretty basic build aspect that I should have definitely looked for before going into his wife of battle, if anything. 
So yeah, we do end up here losing 4-0, and I think uh, my opponent here, Nasser, definitely deserved the win. His builds here was definitely on part, and uh, no reason I'm trying to um, deviate on you know how potentially I would have been able to counter this because I, I wouldn't been able to. I don't believe I had a build, nor did I play it in a way that would have enabled me to ensure a victory. Um, that said, I think and looking back at it, that I probably should have played smarter and probably should have built for um, well another aspect. But that said. Uh, I won't go into much detail on why, what I would have done more than maybe having a life orb. Sneeze would have helped. Uh, I have a Jardos and a Lodios myself, and they were probably more suitable for this Wipe Bell. I think the stress build for this team really is what um, kind of ruins me. I think, had I been able to roar it, for example, Jardos out, I still would have been able to win. However, had Drag Ultra come in, I wouldn't be able to speed that and KO it. So that's also an aspect because that would have meant that potentially. Matabu Koko could have wrapped up the game, but I say could because it, we still have Bulu to deal with and as whether or not that was a Soul's Best and whatnot. Um, so that's a very, very big aspect to take into consideration. I couldn't switch it really to that. Uh, so I really was, want to have that stated that it won't matter how much I kind of whittle myself around. Nasser had the best build for this in Piper Bell and deserved to win. The only thing I could have said is that, you know, of course, I could have lowered the score so it didn't lose that big. Um, that said, of course, we will recover. Um, I definitely need to get my mental state in Wi-Fi battle back again. I haven't been able to battle for what is close to three months and I really feel rusty and I don't I'm not that happy that I feel this rusty because I'm I'm, I'm a powerhouse in leagues usually and uh, For the first time in a very long time. I didn't necessarily know what to do and I think the Wi-Fi battle itself is gonna showcase that um, Playing my ace in Stelton that early. Yeah, that was that was dumb. I should have been able to, since Dragoli couldn't necessarily hurt Gigalith, I should just go for Heavy Slam knowing that Bulu was a very safe switch in. And, and quite frankly, close to KOing it due to it, and that would have been even more effective for, throughout the Quiver Bell. But I don't do that, and I think due to this very reason that my opponent do deserve it, to win. I just kind of want to explain what happened and why. And, well, quite frankly, Nasser is definitely the better player here, and he's the worthy winner due to that. So, with that said, guys, thank you, of course, as always, for watching. And join us, of course, next week, I guess, the next battle of Pokemon League battle. We, we're going to go up against uh, Slow Formula and his Chicago Yersaring, who has Omega Salamence. So, that's going to be clickbait number one. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you for watching. And, like I said, join us next week. Take care. Bye.